Yes, yes, guys, everything bite-sized there. I hope you're all doing well. We're back with another film review, and this time we're looking at the movie Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. This is one of my all-time favourites, but I'm going to suspend my personal thoughts until the end of the video. We're going to start with a few of the top-rated reviews on IMDb. The first one is called This Film Was Too Weird to Live, Yet Too Rare to Die. Where to even start with this? What starts as a fun drug fuel comedy slowly turns into a claustrophobic nightmare of grotesque imagery and sensory overload. I've never done any hallucinogenic drugs, but I imagine that after a while the rush would become a nightmare. This is an ugly movie, it's hard to watch, it's extremely uncomfortable and that's the point. Terry Gilliam said in his own words, I want it to be seen as one of the great movies of all time and one of the most hated movies of all time. Judging by the critics reactions, he succeeded. The film has an almost perfectly split 50% on Rotten Tomatoes and many critics including Roger Ebert were completely appalled by it and honestly it's not hard to see why. This next review is called Slippery Mice. I personally found it fascinating. To portray a permanently drug-induced state to the big screen was done with creativity and subtle humour. You could expect nothing less from director Terry Gilliam, who has played such a massive role in the brilliant and original Monty Python works. Having never read any of Hunter S. Thompson's work, I get the impression that justice is done for the adaption to the big screen. An absolutely quality cast must be credited for this, ensuring a natural performance is achieved. Las Vegas, which features strongly throughout the movie, seems to be so appropriate when dealing with this subject matter. They just seem to go hand in hand. The last review we're going to read is called On a Razor's Edge. In a sense, this is kind of like the movie Terry Gilliam was born to do. Terry Gilliam is an awesome visual director in the same way that Tim Burton is an awesome visual director. Every single frame bleeds its own distinct style of beauty, but sometimes the story just doesn't hold up or the stylistic elements get in the way. Still, it's a hard thing to pull off translating Thompson to film, and while Gilliam does succeed, it's largely from the support of the incredible cast working under him to work out. Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro especially have to work really hard on exaggerating when needed. What feels like hundreds of hallucinogenic scenes with just barely enough narrative structure to pull them together. Of course the outcome is pretty fantastic but it sets this movie squarely in the love it or hate it section of the world's video library which is pretty much Gilliam's career simplified anyways. Yeah, so those are some interesting reviews. I personally love the movie because I used to be a big acid head. I used to take other hallucinogenics and a lot of other drugs. So I relate a lot to the movie and they depict the absolute horror that trips can turn into, but they also like depict some of the fun that you can have out of it. But ultimately, to me, it's, it's like requiem for a dream it, it helps remind me why i don't do drugs anymore because the state of depravity that the characters get into is dire i like johnny depp a lot and i also like benicio del toro but to see them both together in a film is magical this is a movie that i watch throughout the rest of my life but sparingly as it is a little bit traumatizing every time i watch it anyway you've been locked into everything bite-sized check out my other content and i'll catch you in the next one peace